Do not deceive yourself. God cannot provide fourth dimensional realities if you are in a third dimensional dispensation. It doesn't happen. That's not how God works and it's not going to start tomorrow. I gave an example once and I said there was a time years ago I cannot tell how far but I believe there was a time years ago in South Africa where you'd buy an acre of land at a dollar. Has that existed once? Where you'd buy two acres of land probably at $10 or $100. Isn't it? In that eon, the substance of the earth yielded forth its fruit against a certain currency, spiritual, that reconciled with where men were and that provision was enough to buy an acre of land at $100 or $5 or $2. That was an eon. Now, when that eon changes, when that world changes, and the eons, when the Bible, you see, we live in a law, there is a law, of course many people don't know that, but there is a law, progressively, that is adding to every eon, in wealth, in glory, in strength, in wisdom, in life, it adds in every dispensation. It adds more than the previous dispensation. That's why you're taller than your parents. You're more handsome. You're perhaps richer. Because there's something that adds. The glory of the latter church shall be greater than the glory of the former. The path of the just shines brighter and brighter. All of these portions of scriptures tell us that there is a law in the world that makes the next age stronger and mightier. Look at the inter industrial revolution. Look at how that has evolved now. It's artificial intelligence. It's augmented reality. It's internet of things. It's data, big data. It's uh, battery cars. It's Things are changing every day. But the Christians are static. Singing Kumbaya, my Lord. Many of us are stuck where we are. The Bible says that the children of this world have become wiser in their generation than the children of light. This is what our brother was trying to tell us. They're having conversations where Christians don't feature. We're just adding more, more, more days of fasting and prayer. And we think that by fasting we're going to change the laws <laughs> that God has designed for every age. Now, if you are in the age 10 years ago, in the eon of 10 years ago, you have its provisions. It's the mobile phone you can afford. It's the car you can afford. It's the house you can afford. It's the comfort and conveniences you can afford because you are in the eon 10 years back. Some people are alive with you now, but spiritually, they are so back. And the voices that speak in those eons, if you have been by grace um, advantaged to go to the next, when you start hearing them and start designing how they speak, you can tell that this is an old oracle. Something is old about this. It has lost its test. It's like, you know those songs? Why is it that there are songs you could sing and in two weeks they're off the shelf and then a man sings something like amazing grace how's me and it's still fresh there's something that has consistently kept it through the ages but your song is rotting on a cd somewhere you tell people i sang a song in 92 i sang a song i, I sang a song you even start showing the what the cds if that's true for a soul, then I believe it's also true for the message. I believe it's also true for the businessman that we could wake up one day and you have a person you used to do business with, but they no longer speak your language. And the brook dried so early because you see they still have the potential to excel, to advance. But something has not added on them. 
they are stuck in a certain eon. They are stuck in a certain world. Now, when you are stuck in that kind of world, no kind of prayer can take you out because some things don't exist in the prayer equation. Wisdom. Wisdom. Christians, we can speak all we want. We can scream all we want. We can say all we want. I've seen people who have prayed for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. They are going to their grave soon. Nothing has changed. The same old conferences, same old screaming, same old rolling, same old crying, same old, you know, sewing. And then the next year we come back, it's the same conference. And then the next year we come back and then it's the next conference. You start seeing your grandchildren. You know, you see your great-grandchildren. And then one day, 80, your eyes are closing and you're going to heaven and nothing has changed. Praise the Lord Jesus. That's why again I say, we are not the generation that is waiting for God to meet us where we are. We want to connect to what God is doing. Yeah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. When I hear the conversations of the al tombs and the way these men think, and sometimes you sit down with an average Christian, they're not even switched on. <laughs> they're not even switched on. They, 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 they were never even taught to think. Yet the Bible says, I serve the law of God with my mind. God did not give you this mind just to add one plus two. No. The service of the Lord in every field God has ordained you. There is an anointing that God has connected to your mind to serve him. The Bible says, I serve the law of God with my mind. How we dream, how we think, how we meditate, how we create, how we adopt, how we evolve, how we mutate everything everything the bible has given you literally the blueprint of everything you would require to be a success in this world in fact i don't want to speak to people to become successful i want to provoke you to go beyond success now i'm talking to a generation that was born in slavery and it grew up our parents always used to tell us you must be rich you must be rich so our, our mind is always around how do I make how do I make money how do I build wealth and that's all important but what if then one day you become a victim enslaved of the wealth to make without the purpose that is tugged to God's mind concerning this do you know one day all of this will not matter kingdoms and the empires you see in the world one day will not matter. But that I mean that you stand down looking stupid waiting for Jesus to return. No. Martin Luther said, even if Jesus was coming back tomorrow, I would plant my apple tree. Meaning, every day make the best of yourself to make it out there in the world. <laughs> 